All right, time for a video I should have made a long time ago. Uh, the Samsung product, it's actually manufactured in the United States of America. And I normally have nothing but disapproval for Samsung products, but I actually kind of like this thing. So uh, we'll get an overview, we'll tear it apart and show you what it looks like. Uh, so it's got that 90s analog, uh, that analog tuner, this is a bunch of... Uh, uh, Digital tuning on analog tuners and a whole bunch of them, like Emerson's and stuff did it but at the time. And something I like that some TVs of this air 80s era hat or whatever, yeah, I'm gonna say 80s, is uh you can pop this glass out. Okay, so these go this way. Oh, okay, and these actually pop out. Did not re remember that. But yeah, then the whole pane of glass comes out. You can take it out, clean it, replace it if you break it ever, protect your TV. Pretty nice to have. This thing's got a really sharp picture. Alright, so if we spin her to the back, you've got UHF and VHF with the uh, two style connectors, the 75 ohm and 300 ohm, I believe. Uh, manufactured high. I think that's supposed to have a date there, but we have made in the USA with foreign and domestic parts. It's only 66 watts, which is actually pretty low. Oh, and apparently it's got a new warranty from Samsung, which looks a lot like that Subaru car company logo. Oh, and this thing has a um, composite too, which is pretty rare from its time. And that's one of the reasons why I really approve of it. And as far as looks go, this thing looks like it would blend in with 2005 a lot more than most 80s TVs. Uh, I guess you could say it's ahead of its time. And this thing used to be in much better shape, but a long time ago, a dumbass cat jumped up on top of the TV and knocked this thing over. And I don't think the power button works. So we'll, if I, I might tear this thing apart just to get it running. So you might be seeing two TVs. Well, it just turned on when I plugged it in. Power button work. I don't feel it working, but it works. Now, something I do not like about the Samsung, this is how you change it. Change the, set up the channels and change it for what video mode it's in and stuff. What did I just push? The wrong button. There we go. Here's a big picture of both these. What? Are these running at different refresh rates? What? Yeah, they are. Neither of them are synced to a signal, and they are running at different refresh rates. Here is both TVs running on uh, channel 3 with uh, brightness cranked all the way up. This one, the contrast is at the half. This one set all the way up. Uh, I'd properly adjust it for a picture. And this one mutes the static, so I can't show you what it sounds like in this one. Uh, how do I turn the volume up on here? Is it a button on here? Oh, yeah. Might need to put some oil in there or something. You hear that? That's the sound of composite coming through the video. Uh, both the TV's labeling and uh, color of jacks must be reversed. And they are. Now I'm going to try adjusting these for the optimal picture. We are using a PlayStation because a PlayStation already has two built-in composite outs at the same time, which is pretty nice. You know, these two TVs still aren't ready for a side-by-side -side comparison. You can see the composite artifacts over here, and this is disabling it through software, which gives it a much softer picture. This TV came with it by default, but I could shut it off in the menus. And this one, the menus are crippled. I need to find if there's a setup thing for this so I can shut it off. Alright, let's give her a go. Power off, display, 5, volume plus, power on. And we're in. Let's do some service menu stuff. I haven't really explored this before. There's some very useful stuff in here. So look, we got a red drive, green drive, blue drive, red cutoff, green cutoff, blue cutoff, S con, S U, S call, S bright, S round gun, VM edge enhancement. I think that's what was causing my problems on here, and I shut it off, and things got better. I'm pretty sure that's it. Factory reset improved the overall picture, but I don't know how to turn this edge smoothing thing off, and it definitely has it. Or you'd see little zigzags going back and forth in here. It has a very sharp picture, and you see it in the menus, but the edge smoothing thing dulls the picture. Oh, oh god! Oh god! Oh god! I'm trying to adjust the tent, but I can't take this seriously. What happened? Discreet error! <laughs> Oh my god, this is the worst! What? What? Oh my 
my god! Spectre is sent back in time to try to change the course of history. His plans for world domination have begun. And if we don't stop the apes, history will be changed forever. For our only chance. Two of gadget inventions, Fun Club and the Time Net, will all call the transport. I want you to use them to catch the apes and send them back here. The stun club could use to defend yourself against attackers. And when you use on the apes, they'll be stunned. And you'll have an extra second to catch them with the time net. There isn't time for any monkey business, Spike. Our fate is in your hands. We're depending on you. Be careful. Yeah, be careful. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm having issues getting the color just right in here, but I think the Trinitron just looks too damn good in comparison. It's got a really healthy tube in it. I think the green gun's turned on too strong in this thing. I cannot get a proper flesh tone, and it's driving me crazy. All right, this is a good example right here. Oh, uh, you can see the, there's a, it's just greener. I got this adjusted the best I can, and even the white here, the white is greener than here. I'm gonna pop this TV over in a second to take a look at it. But you know what's better about the PlayStation version of this game versus the PSP version? There isn't a, that is the loading screen. There's no waiting while there's black for a while. And this thing's having disk drive errors. It's normally a little snappier than that. Much faster than the PSP version. This is a really good example right here. Look how much greener that white looks than it does over here. Very good example. Let's get this thing popped open. Yep, Red Jack video. You can see video in the PCB there. All right, so this must be the across the line cap here. That's weird. Yeah, we got a fuse under there. Samsung brand capacitor. Don't know if that's a good thing or not. The tube is a 370B122. And it is made in, come on, I know it's Korea. I know it's Korea. Where, made by Samsung in Korea. Yeah, made in USA with foreign and domestic parts. Look at the TV tuner. Oh, I thought there was a, it was attached to board down here. So the, the tuner is just on upside down. Upside down digital tuner. And the uh, pretty small little flyback. It's one of those style. Um, and the horizontal output transistor is got, got a little cage around it. Plastic cage. There's a rectifier for something. Uh, there's our little speaker, and there's our front tuning board. And this thing actually puts out a really good picture for the amount of dust on it. Everything's nice and labeled out in the, uh, what do they call that, silk screen or something when it has the print on it. Uh, so where's the, where's the green gun? Oh, please don't tell me the green gun's just tied in with everything else for the drive. Yeah, these should be the three cutoffs, and these should be the drive. So green doesn't look adjustable. So I'd have to turn red and blue down, I guess. I guess I could play with the green cutoff and see what that does. But I think that would affect my black level. I'm going to see if my CRT tester can do this, and then we'll test it if I can. Well, I don't have one that's quite that number, but I have some in a 370 blank B22. So, uh, and there's a couple of them that use socket 18, and one that uses socket 17, but 18 seems to be more common, and socket 18 and 17, I think, both will fit over here, so we're going to try this on socket, uh, 18, and we're going to wing it. Looking through this book, I thought, I'm off of memory, I thought it was 3.7 was standard, I guess I've been not doing it long enough, apparently it's, uh, 6.3 is common, so that's what we're going to test it with, 6.3. All right, we're getting nothing with this socket, you know, filament, and it's like there's nothing there, no shorts, anything, so let's try the other socket, which I doubt the other one's going to be it, but let's give her a try. All right, we have a load. I see glowage. Uh, all right, uh, I think bias setting D is the most common, so we'll put it to there. Yeah, there's going to be no shorts, no shorts. Gun balance. All right, red. Now, I probably should let this thing sit for a minute, but green. Blue. Uh, a mission. 
blue, green, wait, green's lower, red. Yeah, that's, 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 that's good. <laughs> Alright, and just be on a, I'm going to go to gun balance and set this to A, but I think the bias actually affects the gun balance, so let's, yeah, so, that just means I won't be able to, uh, balance the gun properly, right? I know, let's, let's try it like this. So now I'm bias A, I got the gun rebalanced with it on A, and let's go to a mission. Yeah, no, I believe the first result I seen more. It had a very clear picture. They're almost all using C and D, and the one that actually uses socket 17 is on D as well. So again, I would believe the results of D, and the, the, it looks like that's what it is. So, here you have it. Let's readjust those guns now. I want to know what in this TV was actually made in America. Maybe it was just assembled here, and nothing's made in America. That plate wasn't, because there's Korean letters on the side of it. Uh... That chip back there wasn't, which is probably like the main IC for the tuner and stuff. Uh, but yeah, that, that's Toshiba. I'm not sure where NEC is made. I think it's about time to button her up. Look at how close the whites are now. I like what I see. By the way, I took the disc out during a loading screen. So it would stay black, and then I bumped the brightness up just enough where I can barely see the black being illuminated. And then I adjusted it for uh, all three phosphors being lit up the same. And then I backed it down to the point where I couldn't see it, and then I closed the lid and let the game continue. And I was adjusting it off of colors I seen in the game. Oh, that looks good though. X-ray radiation, you look at this thing, you'll get cancer. Uh, explosion warning. Uh, and we got a little... Not as good as six again. It got a little, uh, got a little, uh, board layout thing. A, diag a, a diagram that's not a schematic. Color. Needs to be turned down. Give me a minute. The PlayStation is terrible at reading disc in comparison to the PlayStation 2. That disc is not in that bad of a shape. I readjusted the spindle on here. I took it off and then I put it down so the little pole was flat up up here. And now it's reading this CD without skipping on any of the tracks. So hopefully Ape Escape will play now. Now, I will never be able to get this thing to look like this thing because the phosphors and that Sony are different. They are definitely different. And one of the big noticeable things, I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up, the reds are so much deeper in there. Even if it's an all red screen on both, the red looks so much better in that Trinitron. No read errors. Yeah, I don't notice the difference on camera, but in real life, their colors pop so much more in the Trinitron. I love this little TV, actually. It's got a really good picture. My 9-inch GE, I have the reds are much more orange in both of these. Pretty good TV, actually. I wish I had a uh, Japanese Sony Trinitron instead of the Air to compare it with, and then something American. Oh, this is the point in time where American TV started getting pretty crappy. There you go, you can see the clarity. Actually, the, the, the Sony is doing this, uh, the Sony TV is doing this crap, this edge smoothing crap, which is making it look way less, way more dull than it is. I bring up the menu, you can see how much sharper it is and everything else. Very sharp picture. This looks a lot softer than the menu. And a way I can prove that it's a, like a, a, um, a software kind of thing that Sony's doing there. The edge smoothing, hardware, whatever. Uh, look, see that you see all those composite artifacts? They're, they're much more smoothed over here. Interesting enough, the camera doesn't see the composite artifacts moving. On this TV, they're flickering all over the place, and on this TV, they're staying in one spot. But, uh... 
What the hell? I don't even, the camera's reacting to it way different than I am. It's not moving on camera because it's going double the refresh rate of the camera. I need a 60 FPS camera to show you what I'm trying to show you.